Hey guys, it's Steve with Prima Coffee. I'm sure people are gonna start rolling in. Um, so we just got back from SCA this week, and which was down in Atlanta, and we're in Louisville, so if you're familiar with US geography, it's about a six hour drive, it's not bad. Um, but, you know, obviously six hours of driving, you probably gotta stop for a break at some point. So what we did was we stopped in Nashville both ways and we went to Steadfast Coffee and we had an amazing time. Um, everything they do there is so tasty and so delicious from the food to the coffee. They're really um, doing some interesting things. One of which is their matchless coffee soda. Um, it's made in a really interesting way. It's a little bit sort of irreverent because a lot of people don't really do carbonation with coffee. Sometimes it tastes really weird. They do it so well and it tastes really, really great. Um, the way that they do it is they do a batch brew that they crash chill uh, in like a bucket of ice or something like that. Uh, and if you visited our booth at SCA, it was probably a pretty similar uh, fashion to what we were doing with our nitro coffee. Um, we're not really totally sure on how they do it. I think that's about right. Um, we didn't see them in the process. We just tried it and it was delicious. So what I want to do here today is kind of try and replicate that. I just brewed some coffee, it happens to be a Steadfast Ethiopia. I just did a, a Kalita wave of it and I got my whole setup here chilling um, and we're just going to kind of jump right into it and get going because it takes a couple minutes to do. So I have uh, the coil chiller, unfortunately is no longer a thing, it's not in production anymore. The units that were available have sold out but it is um, a ceramic chilling device. Uh, we have a middle chamber here full of ice water. I pre-chilled the bottom just to make sure I cool my coffee enough for this purpose. Um, up top I have a little ceramic funnel that I'm going to start to pour my coffee through. So the middle chamber has a, a nice long stainless steel coil in it and you fill the chamber with ice water so as the coffee goes down this coil it chills pretty rapidly. Um, I also, to do this, I have my whipping siphon. It's an ISI siphon. This is the, um, uh, the professional siphon. I forget the name of it. Um, but I have some CO2 chargers that I'm going to use as well. I've also got that filled with ice water just to pre-chill it. Again, I want to make sure everything is nice and cold for this. Uh, CO2 dissolves more, uh, more easily into cold liquids. So I want to make sure everything is nice, nice and cold. Um, so I have about 350 grams uh, or milliliters of coffee uh, brewed and I also have six and a half grams of turbinado sugar they use Demerara at, uh, at Steadfast but this is just an, a lighter brown sugar so it has a little bit of that sort of molasses-y richness um, not a whole lot of sugar you don't want this too sweet but you do want a little tiny bit of sweetness especially for the uh, the body that the sugar will add it'll be a, a little bit more syrupy because it's dissolved into the coffee um, I'm actually going to add that right at the end. I'm going to stir it up a bit. Um, and whatever doesn't dissolve, I don't really care about because I just want a little tiny bit of sweetness. Um, I'm going to wait just a second for that to drip down. And I might as well add the syrup into the, or the sugar into the bottom while we wait. So I just wrapped that in. about to finish dripping through the top. I'm going to pull the top off and give it a little stir on the inside as that finishes. Just do it a little up here. So I'm just going to stir this up just to, because you, you get these little like pockets of heat around the coil as it chills sometimes, depending on the batch size. So just agitating it a little bit is enough to maintain that sort of thermal convection thing going on. It does take another couple of minutes to drain through. So in the meantime, I'm going to dump out my the ice water from my siphon. It's really nice and cold. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my siphon, which is usually used for whipped cream, um, but I'm going to put my coffee inside and I'm going to charge it up with one of these 8 gram CO2 cartridges. Um, so that'll add a bunch of CO2 gas into the chamber. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna vent it because there's gonna be a lot of like air space on the top. So that'll help push out a lot of the just plain old air. I want as much CO2 as possible in here. And then I'm gonna shake the, the dickens out of it um, just to try and get it to, to, uh, to dissolve um, more quickly. But uh, it shouldn't take too long to carbonate properly. There we go, we're pretty much done there. So I'm just gonna set that guy aside. Try not to topple it. 
And just like I said, I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. Try and get some of that to dissolve. If it doesn't dissolve, it's not too big a deal. I'm going to shake it up and anything, anything that's still granulated in the whipping siphon should dissolve or help us uh, get some carbonation going. So transferring it to my siphon. There we go. So back on top. Um, now my siphon has a 500 milliliter capacity, so this is coming in below the max fill, which is good. Um, I'm going to screw on my charger here. Just give it a little stir up. I'm going to take a rag, place it over the top, and just vent it. So like I said, that's mainly because there's going to be some extra airspace on top. And then I'm going to take a second charger and charge it up again. Now with this size siphon, you usually want to vent before you charge a second time. Um, two chargers won't really hit the maximum pressure, but you just want to make sure that you're doing things safely when you're working with pressurized gases. So I'm just going to kind of swirl and shake a little bit. I just want to get the uh, carbon dioxide dissolved in there. This is basically akin to shaking up a bottle of soda, so if I were to try and like open this up right now, it would fizz out everywhere, which is great. But uh, while I'm doing this, does anybody have any questions or comments? Do we have anybody coming? There's a lot of people on. Just, uh, just a bunch of viewers, you guys? They're just saying you're really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, thanks. Is that like Aaron Bikey or something? Yeah. Yes, yeah, of course. Just him. Yeah. Hey, the feeling's mutual, Brian. Um, so I'm going to just kind of start by carving a garnish here. At Steadfast, they serve theirs with a uh, a nice big hunk of orange peel, so I'm doing the same thing. It's just a car car orange, nothing too fancy. I'm going to shave off a little bit of the pith here. And I'm not going to express that yet, but I'll wait. So I'll... Uh, I believe that at Steadfast they actually flame their orange peels, so they, uh, they basically like squeeze the peel into a lighter to express the oil over the top, and it kind of burns and adds this like nice little aromatic quality. I don't have a lighter, so I'm not going to do that, but I will get some ice from my cup. Someone just asked, are you just making a lightly sugared nitro coffee? Uh, not nitro. Um, this one's not nitro, it's, uh, it's carbon dioxide. Um, I've actually never tried plain nitro with, uh, I've done nitrous oxide with plain, like, chilled coffee. I haven't done, uh, plain nitro in one of these with plain coffee. Uh, of course, we have our pegerator set up where we are running nitro, and, um, so I can use this. We are doing nitro, no sugar, but with, uh, kind of the same thing, uh, a batch brewed, crash cooled coffee. I think I need to turn up the gas on that though, it's not quite as fizzy as it used to be. Is the texture essentially the same? Uh, for a carbonated coffee, no. It doesn't have any any real foam on it. Um, it is sparkling, so it has carbonation to it. Um, but if I were to, to, again, because I'm kind of shaking it up right now, um, that sugar does add a little tiny bit of foam, and so if I were to open it up or try and dispense it right now, it would yeah, I'd probably show you. It's a foam right now, but that's not what I want in my drink. I just want it to be sparkling and, um, you know, kind of like a, a soda, you know? hence the coffee soda name. So this guy will take a little bit to sort of subside into liquid, and then there, it'll be just like a tiny little bit, like a couple milliliters in there of liquid. Oops. Um, this isn't quite as cold as I want, so I'm going to try and make an ice bath real quick. Would this taste the same as mixing cold brew with sparkling water or cold soda? Um, I think the short answer is no. The long answer is cold cold brew doesn't really taste anything like flash chilled hot brew. Uh, trying not to make a mess. 
Um, so cold brew, um, and that's a really interesting question because it kind of opens up this whole like, why would you make, why would you go through all this effort to make something like this? Um, cold brew is very easy to brew because you can just drop grounds in like room temperature or even cold water, throw it in the fridge, leave it on the counter, whichever way, um, and just leave it there for hours and hours. So I think 12 to 20 hours, or 12 to 24 hours rather is, um, the typical window, people have you know various recipes that they like to do. Uh, there's also cold drip where you have uh, you know kind of an elaborate large drip tower or even one of the small ones like the the cold brewer B R U E R, um, where water slowly drips over like a vertical conical bed of coffee. Um, but usually that's more like six to eight hours or maybe even down to four depending. Um, so the difference in flavor is really stark. When you leave coffee in contact with water for such a long period of time, you get a really strong brew, um, but you also really don't get the same flavors at all. So a hot brew and a cold brew will pretty much always taste different, even if you brew them to the same sort of recipes. Um, often people make cold brew as a concentrate, which is a little bit different as well. You'll have a higher strength, um, and it'll be sort of a thicker, richer, and also more caffeinated kind of coffee. Um, in this case, what we're doing with a hot brew and then chilling it is we're trying to say, okay, so if, if hot brew has, you know, one flavor, cold brew has another flavor, flavor, how can we kind of, you know, push the hot brew in that direction? So hot brew usually has a little bit more acidity to it. Sometimes it has a little bit more balanced sweetness and it definitely has a lot more going on in terms of aroma. Um, because it's a fresh brew, because it was brewed hot, there was more energy, there's more volatility going on. Um, cold brew has some of those things going on as well, but because it sits there for so many hours, a lot of that volatility means, well, those aromas are just gone. They're gone for good. Uh, you also have a little bit of oxidation happening in cold brew. If you throw it in the refrigerator, it kind of stalls that process, but you know it's still a very long period of time. Oxidation will begin to catch up over time. Um, so cold brew has this you know, sort of rich character to it. It can be very sweet. It's usually not very acidic, not very bitter. Um, sometimes it's just very chocolatey or caramelly but that is also at the expense of more delicate stuff like um, really fruity acidity or floral or again the, the aroma of it. So with a, a hot brew that you crash cool in something like a coil, um, you can preserve the acidity, you can preserve a lot of the aroma, not all of it for a certain. Uh, as it cools down, it's, uh, you know, the, the aromatic compounds are actually sort of like less active, I guess you could call it, harder to detect because they're cold. Um, but you know, in that process of transferring it from you know hot brew container to chilling container to whatever your eventual receptacle is, yeah, some changes take place. Um, but uh, I, I sort of look at it like this: um, if I want to drink something cold in the summer, I usually like a little bit of acidity on it. I, I liken that to lemonade. So lemonade has you know a really sort of pointed acidity, um, as well as some sweetness to it, and it's generally pretty refreshing. Um, if you do the same thing with coffee where you say, okay, let me take a somewhat acidic coffee, a hot coffee, and brew it uh, so the acidity is there and the sweetness is there, and then you chill it down, you get a similar sort of product. It's obviously not going to taste exactly like lemonade, but it has those same sort of characteristics. So with the coffee soda, we're adding a little bit more acidity in the form of carbonation. Um, carbon dioxide creates carbonic acid in the presence of water, and obviously um, coffee is over 90% water. Um, you also create a little bit of a, a different sort of mouthfeel because of the, you know, the tingling of the carbon dioxide bubbles. Um, and I'm sure that Steadfast developed this using sugar because they want to offset a little bit of that sort of artificial acidity in a way. Uh, carbonic acid, there's a little tiny bit in coffee, but it's not usually a very prominent flavor. Um, so when you carbonate it, it can sort of be seen as an off flavor. So if you add a little bit of sugar in the mix, you've created a more balanced beverage. You have the acidity of the coffee, the natural sweetness of the coffee, plus a little bit of extra sweetness to offset the extra acidity. Um, and again, like I said, the sugar also adds a little bit of body back in the mix. So, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's basically just different approaches. This is very hands-on and very kind of involved in terms of a cold coffee recipe, but it's also very refreshing. Cold brew is something that pairs very well with milk and sugar and that sort of thing, This the typical sort of uh, accoutrement that um, people like to add to their coffee, um, but on its own it can be a little disappointing. It certainly doesn't really stand up to a really good hot brew in terms of flavor complexity. And that's not always what people are looking for, but you know, when you 
talk about a coffee nerd like myself, and I like to really sort of dive into the intricacies of uh, of beverages or, and food in general, like um, how can I make this taste more like that and that sort of thing. Like that really, that is really up my alley is going for something where I can say, let's make my coffee a little bit more like lemonade. Let's make it a little bit more refreshing in the summer. So um, that's why I like the hot brew, flash chilled sort of coffee method. Um, and of course there are different approaches. Uh, we have a whole blog about it, of course. Um, covering all kinds of uh, cold brew and iced coffee methods, um, including some of our own recipes uh, that are a little bit more out there. Um, so this guy sat for a little while and it's chilled. So thanks for asking such an involved question that allowed me to <laughs> stand here and actually do something instead of waiting. Um, I'm gonna set that guy aside, wipe out my spill here. And you can see that that foam that basically had filled the glass earlier is really, there's not much left. Um, so I don't want my coffee to foam, I just want it to be carbonated. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to vent off the entire container. I'm going to squeeze out as much carbon dioxide as I can. And I just got a rag to, just in case it kind of spits out at me. So it's usually a fairly slow process. I don't want to vent it off too much because I don't want the, uh, the bubbles. Oop, there we go. So it just kind of spit out at me. I'm going to let that sit for a minute more then chill back again. It's still not quite ready. Um, any more questions? You guys want to know anything else about uh, the coffee soda idea or cold brew in general or even nitro? Um, I guess I'll just sort of mention real quick what we were doing at SCAA if you weren't able to make it. Um, I, I briefly mentioned that we were serving coffee on nitro that was uh, basically the same sort of method. It was hot brewed and crash cooled. So again, um, the idea there is to try and preserve the acidity and sweetness that you get in hot brewed coffee so that they're a little bit more balanced towards that acidity end of things when you, uh, when you do a batch brew versus a, a cold brew. Um, so cold brew on nitro has been a very popular thing that's kind of popping up all over the place these days. Uh, because it has a lot of the richness and sort of creamy mouthfeel that you get from like a Guinness, you know, a, something from the something borrowed from the beer world, where you're taking a rich and thick, sort of viscous beer uh, that's carbonated already, but you can add uh, as, add sort of an extra layer on top of that by serving it on nitro or nitrogen. Um, usually, the beer world doesn't use pure nitrogen to serve their beer because they want to preserve the carbonation. So they usually mix in a little bit of carbonation to the, or carbon dioxide rather, to the gas mix. So they use something called beer gas, which is 70 to 80 percent nitrogen and then you know 20 to 30 percent carbon dioxide. Um, but that it has the same effect. So you serve it through one of these guys, which is a, it's called a stout faucet. It's a different sort of faucet. It has a little tiny um, restriction plate in there that has these little holes. So as the beer flows through it, or the coffee flows through it, it breaks up all the bubbles of carbonation and nitrogen that are coming out of solution into really, really fine bubbles. So you get this nice, creamy, thick, rich head, again, just like a Guinness. So when you serve cold brew coffee on that, you have that rich, you know, sort of sweet, creamy coffee that also now has this head of, of nitrogen bubbles, and it has a great coating mouthfeel. But we said, okay, well, you know, if cold brew is not exactly our thing and we want to try and do hot brew coffee that's crash chilled to get a certain flavor out of it, can we take that coffee and serve it on nitro? And the answer is yes. So we take a batch brewer and we flash chill it, and we, we did a little demo of this a couple weeks ago, but we flash chill it through a bucket, a big bucket of ice water, uh, like a giant version of coil here. Um, and in about five minutes we've reduced a gallon and a half of coffee from like 180 degrees to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a very efficient uh, chilling method. And then we keg it up, we pressurize it with nitrogen gas, we let it condition for maybe 25, 30 minutes total, depending, you know. Uh, there were points at the trade show we were, we were out of coffee and we had to really rush the process, so we'd shake the keg up a whole bunch. And you know, the shortest turnaround time that we had for that was about 45 minutes from uh, starting the brew to serving the coffee. So it's, uh, it's a hot brew, it brews quickly, it cools quickly, and then it can keg and serve quickly. Uh, so very, very interesting method, especially if you run a cafe, because it means if you run out of coffee in your kegs, if you drain your kegs, you know, half week through a, a busy Saturday, uh, you're not stuck. You can continue serving coffee. You can throw it in your batch. You can get your batch brew ready. You can throw it in the chiller, keg it up, and get serving in, in you know under an hour. 
Um, but uh, very interesting. It was, a, it was a pretty big hit. A lot of people really liked the flavor. Um, again, you know, that sort of acidity, the presence of these like sort of vibrant aromas. Um, really, really interesting stuff. Um, but obviously, you know, we don't serve coffee for a living. The whole thing is that we're doing these nitro kits with kegerators and kegs and nitrogen bottles and all that stuff. So we're um, we're getting ready. Well, actually, they're all on the website already. So somebody else, how could they make a chiller to do for their coffee truck? Uh, I can show you what we made, which is, you know, it's a little, um, it's a little lowbrow. <laughs> it's a five gallon bucket uh, with a 30 foot copper coil running through it. So this is similar to a wort chiller like you'd use for beer, uh, except that ours is a gravity fed system instead of uh, a wort chiller usually is an immersion coil that you fill up with running cold water. So you, you hook it up to a faucet or something or a hose or, or what have you, you run cold water through the coil and you dunk that into your hot liquid. Whereas for us, we're running the hot liquid through the center of the coil in a very large bucket of ice water. So we have this vinyl tubing that hooks up, it actually, it's the right diameter hook up directly to the coffee dispenser, the Curtis dispenser that we have. So coffee runs down through, 30 feet of tubing is lots of time and lots of contact with ice water to chill it down very, very rapidly. Um, but for a truck, you probably want something even a little bit more permanent than this and well-constructed, certainly. Um, so you could probably get even a stainless steel uh, coil um, just for uh, food safety. It's easier to clean and easier to prevent. You know, uh, Copper will, over time, be eroded by the acidity of coffee. Uh, so this is really only a temporary setup for us. Um, but, uh, if you were to put a coil like that in like a stainless steel basin and you could fill up the basin if you have an ice machine or something like that on the truck or you could even just go the um the, the beer maker route if you have running cold water um you can run it through an immersion cool or a cooler just like a, a wort chiller um and cool it down that way they also make um count they're called counterflow chillers um it's basically like this except the there's a small tube that the beer runs through and a larger tube right on the outside of it that runs cold water directly around the tube. So imagine like this 3 8 inch tubing has, if it were to have like a 5 8 inch jacket around it through which cold water will, will sort of flow uh, as it's flowing down through this tube. And you can get those in different sizes. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're also pretty efficient in terms of chilling everything down. Um, so again, for us, this worked pretty well for doing a gallon and a half in about five minutes. And actually the other day I did a two gallon batch and it, it was pretty much the same result. About, it was a little, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit as it exited into the keg. Um, all kinds of options there. Do you have a personal favorite cold brew method for home use? Um, I'm not such a big cold brew, or cold brew fan. Um, I usually make my coffee hot and chill it down, um, just like this. I don't usually use a coil because I don't have one at home. I'll actually use a, um, a cocktail shaker, like a stainless steel um, shaker tin, and I'll dunk it in an ice bath, just a big you know, big container of ice water. I'll put my coffee in there and I'll stir, and if I've got, a nice, if I've got enough ice water contact, it usually cools down in just a couple minutes. But um, When I used to make cold brew, I used to go pretty simple. I'd do like 80 grams of coffee in a French press, in a full French press, so about 80 grams per liter and I wouldn't dilute it at all. So I just let it go for 12 hours in my fridge. I pour it through uh, like a V60 or something to, to separate all the coffee out. Um, and uh, you just kind of drink it straight that way. Um, sometimes I would actually add um, orange or, or lime zest to it um, after I had filtered it and just kind of shake it around and let it sort of have contact for, you know, 20 minutes to an hour or something, depending on how it tasted. Like I just pour off a small bit and see how it tasted. But that was a really refreshing sort of thing. It adds this like really nice citrus to it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not much of a cold brew drinker anymore. Um, I think I, I prefer the flavor complexity from a hot brew that's been chilled. Um, all right, let's try this guy again. Pull it out of here. See if he's ready. There's still a little bit of liquid in the spigot, but... All right, we are depressurized, finally. Oops, it's bubbling a little tiny bit. So now I'm gonna unscrew this. Steadfast told us that they, um, 
So they have a couple of things that are a little bit different from us. They're, they're using a keg for theirs. You can see I've got some foam in the top. Um, so they're using a keg, so they have kind of a consistent pressure and supply of CO2. Uh, so that's a little bit different than this method. But hopefully we've got some good carbonation here. That's pretty nice. That's pretty foamy too. So I am going to give my citrus a little squeeze. And dunk that right in. And there we have our very own coffee soda. Nice and refreshing and chill. Mm. That, there's like just enough sugar. Like I said, just enough sugar to kind of offset the, the extra acidity from the carbonic acid. Mm. It's really nice. It's, it's, it's light. It's really refreshing. It's, uh, it's probably going to be one of my favorite coffee drinks for the summer of this year. Um, but anyway, look at that. How easy. I mean, it takes a few minutes to get, to get going, and, but you can use a fairly conventional whipping siphon. Um, if you've got this in your cafe, you can make a large batch or something like that in a keg. Um, make it ahead of time, serve it. If you've got a kegerator like this, you can even serve it on draft. Really cool stuff. Does it um, taste like a half hour? Does it taste like a what? A half hour? A half hour? Yeah, that's a... Does, it, does it take a half hour to make? I'm gonna answer that question because I'm not really sure. Um, it tastes, uh, it, it takes, yeah, probably about 20 minutes total just to make sure everything's chilled and brewing the coffee fresh and everything. Um, it doesn't really taste like it's been sitting around for 20 minutes. It tastes pretty fresh. Mm. And the orange really adds a nice layer to it. We're using an Ethiopian coffee from Steadfast for this one. So I'm sure, you know, if you're using their different coffees, if you have like uh, a more earthy like Papua New Guinea or something like that, you know, you might want to try different garnishes or even sort of different additives. So use a different sugar or sweetener or maybe even add like, you know, if you have a coffee that's uh, very acidic but not very sweet or not very floral, something like that, you could try adding like an orange blossom water or something, just, just a tiny drop to add a little bit more of a perfume to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is basically getting into like coffee mixology in a way, like you're starting to treat coffee a little bit like cocktails, like, you know, um, there are all kinds of like fizzy cocktail drinks. Sometimes people actually carbonate them in a siphon just like this, and we're treating coffee in the same way that we might treat like a, a, a liquor or a mixed drink or something like that. So it's uh, it's really nice to have uh, such a rewarding kind of coffee drink um, when you're you know able to treat it like a, like a mixed drink um, and have it like really perform very well. Um, anyway, I'm sorry you guys can't taste it. It's very good. But... Um, any questions? Any more? We'll probably get this wrapped up in a second here. Cool. Well, as always, um, find us on Twitter, find us on Instagram, Facebook, all those things. Um, we'll post this video to YouTube, so if you want to come back and uh, kind of go over the recipe again. Uh, so what I did to brew, I did 23 grams of coffee. Uh, we ground it on EK43 at a 15. Um, I brewed it in a Kalita, Kalita Wave 185 um, with 350 milliliters of water. Uh, to that, I added uh, a little under, I don't remember if it was a little under six or a little under seven grams. It was about about 2% um, by mass of turbinado sugar. And then I put it in a whipping siphon, charged, uh, I'm sorry, well, I chilled it first, so I ran it from my coil, but I, I chilled the coffee down, and I put it in my whipping siphon, and I used two carbon dioxide chargers to charge it up with CO2, kept it chilled, let it sit for a little bit until it picked up a, a nice amount of carbonation and then dispensed it. Um, so there's, there's your recipe. If you want to try it at home, let us know if you do and what you think. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you around.